Belt Roller Assembly. Hi, Joe Cerrone. In this video, we're going to take a look at creating this belt roller assembly. We've started the belt roller in a previous video, and what we're going to do is we're going to create this bracket. And so the bracket dimensions are given in both millimeters and in inches. So this top circular feature is 1.181 inches, and then it's got this hole through it. And then the whole thing is 1.969 from this plane here. What we're going to do is we're going to create this solid box. And then in our previous video, we created this little flange here. And what we'll do is we'll orientate that solid box to that position, and then we'll subtract it. Create another solid box shape place it on this feature at the midpoint, and then create a cylinder feature, and then move that into place, union them, and then create another cylinder, and subtract that, and then create this gusset. Once we have that component created, we'll align it, and then we'll 3D mirror it. So let's get started. I'm going to create a layer. And I'm going to call it bracket. Select color. And we'll make that current. Next thing that we'll do is we'll create this box shape. And if we look in our drawing here, we have this other feature right here that we created. And it's essentially this part right here before we 3D mirrored it. Create a box. We'll set the length at 1 point, at point 0.197. We'll set the width at 2.835. And the height at 0.157. And then what we'll do is we'll bring that over to this location and subtract it. So we'll move it. From this top corner here to this top corner here. And then we'll 3D rotate it, placing the gizmo at this corner here, selecting this blue axis. We'll polar track this out, track it again, and then it looks like I've got to move it in. So we'll use the 3D move command. Be sure to use object snaps. We'll subtract this. We'll select the larger shape, hit enter, and then the smaller shape to be subtracted from it. I'm going to try this in wireframe. And that worked. All right, we're going to make this other solid box. And this is then going to be orientated over here at the midpoint.
and the height is 1.969 so we've created this box feature and then what we're going to do is take a look at it at a southwest isometric view and I think I I was pretty close on this there we are and then what we'll do is we'll move this and just a regular move command and I'll just move this so it's a little farther away so we can see it and I'm going to move it again from the midpoint shift right mouse click to the midpoint and it looks like we've got to align this so I'm gonna undo that and I'm gonna use the align command shift middle mouse wheel to rotate it and what I want to do is I want to align this face with this face here so that they're parallel align we'll select this part to be aligned we'll give this point here map it to this point here We'll say this point here, map it to this point here, shift middle mouse wheel, and then this point here, we'll map over to this point. And so now that those two parts are lined, what we can do is we can then move it. And so we'll say move, we'll select it, we'll move it from the midpoint. To the midpoint. Shift middle mouse wheel. Alrighty. Then we're going to create the cylinder shapes and the cylinder has a radius of 0 0.590 and has a height of 0 0.512. We'll 3D rotate that and then we'll place it at the top of this assembly over here. Cylinder. And if you have dynamic UCS on, you really can just map it right to this. And I'll show you that technique. First, I'll do it their way. And so we'll make a cylinder with a radius of 0 0.590. And then we'll make that height 13, excuse me, 0 0.512. And then what we'll do is we'll 3D rotate that. And we'll do that again. We'll hit escape. And then we'll move that and notice that the flat side is on the side with the holes on it. And so if we look at that from that perspective, we would move this from the center to the midpoint. And then we would union those components together. Another way to do the same thing would be to have dynamic UCS on and to create the feature on the side. And so if we deleted that and then we check to make sure that our dynamic UCS is on, what we can do is create a cylinder and we create that on the back side of it here from this midpoint and it's mapping to the other way. We can use a three-point UCS. Actually, I think I can get it to map. Let's just see if we can acquire. There we go. And then we can acquire that point, and then we can make it that height 0.512. So another way to do 
pretty much the same thing. And then what we can do is I can union these together. And then save the drawing as belt roller assembly. And we'll just add a three to this. Alrighty, continuing. We're going to create another cylinder at the center point of this feature right here. And we using the dynamic UCS that we talked about. And the radius will be 0.238. So let's get started. And so here's our radius, 0.238. We'll say cylinder. Here we map to that. And then we acquire. And then we make that radius 0.236. And it says just to create it longer than we need to. So we'll just pull that out like that. Then we'll subtract that hole. And then we'll model the wedge. The length is going to be 0.866, the width is 0.394, and the height is 1.575. All right, we're going to 3D rotate that. We'll rotate that again. We'll hit escape to clear the grips. I'm going to change this from conceptual to 2D wireframe so that we can see where that's going to go. And we're going to move it, just a regular move command, from the midpoint. to the midpoint. And it looks like this one's off a little bit too. So we're going to need to align that. Because we've got some misalignment. So we'll move it. Give ourselves some space to be able to 3D align it get ourselves an angle that we can see. And I think I'll just rotate this. We'll say align. We'll select this object to align. We'll hit enter. We'll map these coordinates to the plane. Point one, point two, and then point three. Now we'll move it to the midpoint. I'm going to change from conceptual to 2D wireframe. And we'll move this from the midpoint to the midpoint. Verify it. Conceptual. All right. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to move this onto the assembly and we're going to un we're going to add a fillet to this 
So we'll add a fillet to this of 0 0.590. And I'm not sure, I don't think we've unioned this yet. So we'll union it. In our solids, we'll select fill it. We'll set the radius to 0 0.590. And then we'll select this edge right here. Shift middle mouse wheel. And this edge here. Shift middle mouse wheel. Enter, enter. Alrighty. Now we'll move it. I'm going to go back to a southwest isometric view. Try the southeast. It appears to be the same. And we'll move these. We may have to line them up with the align tool. Let's see how they line up. And this looks fine. All right, we'll 3D mirror this to the other side. Three D mirror. We'll select this feature, hit enter, shift middle mouse wheel, midpoint, midpoint. And we need one more plane, one more point. Delete the source object, no. And that completes this video for part two.